Champions Germany qualified with a head of steam, winning every game and finishing with a plus 39 goal difference. They were the sole side in UEFA qualifying who won every game and had the best goal difference. Thomas Müller and Sandro Wagner, who is not in Germany's 23, led the scoring with five each, while four others, including Timo Werner, netted three. Germany play a very familiar 4-2-3-1 with a solid defensive spine built around the Bayern Munich players Jerome Boateng, Mats Hummels and Joshua Kimmich at right back. If Manuel Neuer, also of Bayern, does not regain full fitness, Barcelona's Marc-André Ter Stegen is a capable stand-in who plays similarly as a sweeper-keeper. This allows Germany to push up and compress the space and the centre-backs will also bring the ball forwards between themselves and the midfield. Germany play a possession-based style of football, with Thomas Müller angling in from wide positions in the 4-2-3-1, supported by the fullbacks who push high. Timo Werner, who will probably start up front, adds pace and directness, playing off the shoulder of the last defender, while Mario Gomez offers an alternative that is more of a physical and aerial threat. Germany are hugely strong and justifiably many people's favourites to retain their title, something not done since Brazil in 1958 and 1962. They are less experienced than 2014's vintage, but with exciting young talents like Leon Goretzka and Werner, this could offset that. There is also a lack of obvious cover for Kimmich and ball winner Sami Khedira, but the squad should be versatile enough to cover for that. Germany will qualify and should make the final four with ease. South Korea marched through their first phase of AFC qualifying, going unbeaten in their group, but then finished second to a very capable Iran team in the third round of qualifying, scoring 11 but conceding 10. They had 3 0 0 draws, and none of their games were decided by more than one goal in the third round. Spurs' Son Hyun Min top scored for South Korea with 7. Shin Tae Young sets Korea Republic up as a 4 4 2. Captain Ki Sun Young, familiar to Swansea fans, will drop deep to collect the ball from the centre backs, while Ku Jia Chul, the other central midfielder, is more box to box and can score arriving late in the opposition's area. Wide midfielders Lee Jae Sung on the left and Woo Young Jung on the right will tuck in to find possession, allowing the fullbacks to get forwards and support the strikers. Spurs' Son Hyun Min, Korea's one standout player, will be expected to create and score, while experienced Junbuk striker Kim Shin Wook will vie for one of the other strikers' spots with RB Salzburg's Kwon Hee Chen. Korea Republic will defend as a 4 4 2 but press up into a 4 3 3 where possible, driving the opposition over to one side. They are quick and technical and like to hit teams on the break but have found goals quite hard to come by. Unlike up front and in midfield, Korea Republic do not have a goalkeeper or defender who currently plays outside of Asia. Although both Park Joo-ho and Kim Jin-soo have Bundesliga experience, it is an area of weakness. While Korea Republic could pose teams issues going forwards, it's unlikely to be enough to secure qualification from this group. Mexico took CONCACAF qualification at a canter under the feisty and unpredictable Juan Carlos Osorio topping their 4th and 5th round groups and losing only once in 16 games. PSV's Irving Lozano top scored for Mexico with 4 goals. Mexico's formation is often written as a 4-3-3, but in reality they resemble more of a 3-1-3-3, with Andres Guardado sitting in front of a back 3 as a playmaker, a solid midfield of ball wingers, and wide men who can get high up the pitch. The use of someone like Jesus Gallardo at left wing means they can easily fall back into a four-man back line should they wish, with the right-hand centre-back moving out to right full-back. Creativity comes from the wide frontmen, especially Lozano, who should announce himself as a real talent on the world stage, something Eredivisie watchers have known for a little while already. Marco Fabian, if selected, gets forward from midfield to assist the attackers, led by Javier Hernandez. Guardado pulls the strings from deep, looking to get the ball wide quickly, while the centre-backs also split and play long balls down the line. When the opposition attack, central midfielders Diego Reyes and Hector Herrera shut things down quickly, before recycling to Guardado or hitting it wide immediately. Mexico's idiosyncratic approach could cause teams expecting a traditional setup some issues. There are weaknesses, however. Nestor Araujo's injury robs Mexico of real talent at centre-back, and there is a reliance on Lozano, Chicharito and Carlos Vela for goals and creativity. They look a good bet from a competitive group, though, and Lozano is a real talent. Sweden achieved qualification in the face of serious challenges. First, they lost Zlatan. Then they came second in a group featuring France and the Netherlands, and finally, they overcame Italy in the playoffs. 
Jan Andersen's team is well organised and possessing a great team spirit despite, or perhaps because of, a lack of superstars. Sweden play a 4-4-2 that morphs into a sort of 4-2-2-2 with fullbacks pushing up in possession. Their finest creative player, Emil Fosberg, plays much as he does for club RB Leipzig, pushing up and in from the left midfield position and seeking to pick passes to the strikers or carve out chances for himself. The right midfielder, usually Victor Clausen or Jimmy Dermaz, does the same, while Albin Ekdal and Sebastian Larsson patrol the centre. Sweden are conservative, often playing it back to the fullbacks when regaining possession in the middle third, rather than looking to attack quickly on the counter. They then look to hit it long for the strikers, two of Marcus Berg, John Guidetti and Ola Toivonen, who run the channels, creating space for the inside-out movement of the wide midfielders. This can also create room for Sweden to build through the middle. Sweden are a good side, but not a great one. Forsberg is the only game-changer, while some of the younger talents such as Philippe Herlinder and Oskar Hiljemark tend to sit behind more experienced players in the pecking order. Larsen still has a mean set-piece delivery though, and Sweden will be very hard to break down, so they will be tough opponents. It's unlikely to be enough to get them past the group stage though.